Welcome to part two of this video clip explaining exposure. We're now going to look at shutter speed. When we set a camera to fully automatic, it will decide the shutter speed and it could mean that this is inappropriate. For example, the shutter speed might be so slow that we get a blurred image because there's something moving. Once you understand shutter speeds, you can move the camera off automatic and have far more control over what's happening and as a result get better pictures. Here are all the standard shutter speeds used for a typical digital SLR camera. The centre point can be considered something like 125th of a second. This is an average speed. And you'll notice that as we move up and down this range, we're always doubling or halving the exposure time. Because in photography, we're always interested in doubling or halving the amount of light getting into the camera. This shutter speed is so important, the information is shown in the viewfinder. As the shutter speed drops and becomes slower, we can suffer from two types of problems with blur. One of which is if we're trying to hand hold the camera, we just can't do it on a shutter speed lower than say a thirtieth of a second. We're just incapable with our hands of holding the camera still enough. And we have to use something like a tripod to support the camera to make sure for the entire duration of the photograph the camera is not moving at all. The other sort of problem we have is something in the photograph moving. If somebody's walking, for example, using a slow shutter speed would mean they would just become a blur. So it's so important for us to have an understanding of what shutter speeds we should use in different types of photographs. Here's a horrible photograph where the whole photograph is blurred because the shutter speed dropped to an eighth of a second because of the low light conditions and because the camera was not supported it's just a complete blur. And here's an example where the camera was held still but the person has moved so much so that again it's a useless photograph. I'm going to come back to shutter speeds in a moment but for now we're going to move on and look at the third aspect of exposure and that is the sensor sensitivity. We can set the camera in such a way that we'll get a very high quality photograph but it will need more light to do this. Or if we're working in low light conditions we might decide that we can't have a high quality image and so we can set it in a way that it will still get a photograph without requiring a great deal of light. Here are some typical ISO numbers that you're likely to find on your camera. The important thing to remember here is if you double the number, you halve the amount of light required to take the photograph, but you reduce the quality of the photograph you're going to get. If we have a 1600 ISO photograph, you'll find it be very, very grainy. So now we've looked at the three aspects of exposure, let's put these together. Normally what will happen is we'll set the ISO and then when we come to take a photograph the automatic metering in our camera will give us a possible shutter speed and aperture that we could use to try and get a correct exposure. Now let's imagine that we go to take a photograph and inside the viewfinder we see the number 125 indicating that the shutter speed that it wants to use is 125th of a second and 5.6 indicating the camera has decided that the aperture should be f5.6. If the camera is on fully automatic, we have no way of changing either of these values. But by moving the camera onto program mode or maybe aperture priority, we can then use the thumb wheel to vary these values. They'll always ensure that you get the correct exposure so as the aperture gets smaller and the F number increases, so the shutter speed will get slower to compensate. If you find 
that the shutter speed is getting too slow for the depth of field you need, that's when you need to consider increasing the ISO. You'll be dropping quality, but at least you'll get your photograph. Remember, all this exposure information is held in the metadata of the file that goes onto your computer. So later, when you're reviewing your photographs, you can see what exposure settings you used. Well, I hope you understand a bit more about exposure now, and it will mean that you can get off that automatic mode and start controlling the shutter speed and apertures when you take photographs. You'll find your photography will improve no end when you start doing this. Good luck. If you want to know more about our training courses, please do go to our website.